All right, this is chapter two. I don't know what part this is. Uh, part A, B, C, part three, I, I believe. So um, let me explain. Uh, I'd like for you to look at the example, the um, code listing 2-17 on page 61. Code listing page um, 61, the wages job I want uh, with it. And I want you to look at the formula all you're doing is from line 7 to 13, you're initializing, you're declaring some of those numbers. Coming down on 15, 16, with it, you're doing some sort of calculation with this thing, and then you're outputting it to the screen, right? That's, that's basically what you're doing with this thing. And if you look at, there's an order of operation with this thing. The right side carries on what's called the formula with this thing. So the base pay times the regular hours on line 15 equals to the left hand side is the regular wages. The overtime pay times the overtime hours that will equals to the overtime wages with the same. Now uh, when you look at this I'd like for you to come over and look at the uh, come down to the bottom of this thing alright bottom of, of uh, on page 62 Here's a, here's a neat thing about um, page 62 is if you want to convert a number that, for example, if you look at numbers a double, now if I took 5.0 divided by 2, that point zero, I'm looking at the bottom of page 62, um, if you took 5 and divide by 2, that's going to give you an int, right? And you, number is a double. If I want to make number as a double, I have to put that decimal after that point 0.5. So if I took a a double divided by a an int, I'm going to get a double, right? So so just to you know clarify whatever I'm doing right now with it as well. There's what's called the order of precedence, operator precedence with this thing. So so here here's something that I I, I just went over with you is uh, in Java what is the value of 1 divided by 2 well 1 is an int 2 is an int the answer will be 0 alright because an int will drop off the decimal part it will take the whole number part what is the decimal part what is the whole number of 0.5 it's actually 0 alright so integer division will truncate any decimal part in the remainder of the same that's very important Operator precedence. This is very, very important with this thing. So, if you took a right to a left, which is called the associative rule in this thing, so negative 4 plus 3, that will give you this is what I'm talking about is any sign in front of the number that takes the highest priority. All right, any sign takes in front of the number takes the highest priority. Then you do multiplication, division, and mod. Okay, so it goes from left to right. Last two is just addition and subtraction. That's from left to right as well. So if you took this, for example, if you took this this right here, take a look at this. You would do this one first, and multiplication. You do all that first with it, right? So this is how you're going to do this thing. You're going to take. <clears throat> let me get a piece of tea here. So let me explain this part right here. What's 4? You got to do this first. So if you think about this mod, you got to do first, right? So this is your bunch right here. You got to do this from left to right. Yeah, that takes higher precedence with this thing. Imagine if you want to put this in a parentheses. So 4 mod 3 is 1. 1 times 13 is 13. 13. So it becomes negative 4 plus 13 plus 2. Negative 4 plus 13 is what? 9. So you take care of all that up to here. Plus 2 will give you back to 11. Okay. So same goes here, left to right. But remember now, this is what? 18. You do that part first because it's multiplication. So you do this first. So from left to right, 6 plus 9. 3 is 9. 9 minus 4 is what? 9 minus 4 is 4. 4 plus Okay, 
let, 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 let me repeat this just really quick. You have 18, you do that first. So you do 6 plus 3 is 9, 9 minus 4 is 5, 5 plus 18 will give you 23. Okay. So make sure you review these mathematical operations with this thing. This is very, very important with this as well. So I want to let you, you know, go through this. Do, you know, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally again. Remember that? So you do what's inside the parentheses first, right? And then you work it out with this, all right? So combining a sign operator, make sure you're able to do this, by the way. I have several math problems for you to do uh, on the exam, so make sure you're able to to come up with the right correct answer with this thing, okay? And I will have a mod, all that stuff on here as well, so make sure you you, you be able to do that thing with it as well. Um, combining operators, Java has some combined assignment operator. These operators allows the programmer to perform arithmetic op although they're not required, these operators are just popular since they're short and simple. Uh, with that as well. So I have several, several of these problems I like for you to do. Uh, combine operators such as you need to know this uh, from similar to C++. Anytime you have a plus equal, that means what? This is what this means. So the right side equals the left hand side. Okay. Same as if you um, subtract, equal, combine operators, multiplication, division. Same thing, same thing, mod, okay? So so make sure you understand this. I do have a test question on this part right here with it. Creating constants with this thing. The constants are, uh, main programs have data that does not need to change. They're different from literals. Literals with literal value can make the program hard to read and maintain with this thing. So you replace literal values with constant remedy this problems with this thing. So if you have a literal, uh, such as you initialize something, like if I said int x equal to 5 semicolon, well, you can actually do final int x equal to 5. So that, you know, constants are not designed to change with it, and they, they help you, uh, the programmer, to use this, uh, the name rather than throughout the program with the same. Make sure you uppercase your constants. All right, make sure you uppercase your constant. So uh, that is an implied type of programming with this. So that's been a, always a best practice that we use. Instead of using const like C++, you use the word final. Final is equivalent to the, the constants with it. So final, data type, uppercase everything. This is your identifier. Set equal to some value and a semicolon. Okay. Let's move to your string class with this thing. When talking about your string class, uh, Java has no primitive data type that holds a series of character. So string class in Java is a standard library file. You don't have, there is no library file for string like C++. Remember in C++ you had to use what? Pound, include, string. Not in Java. And the second thing that you're moving here is you notice the string data type here is, starts with an uppercase S. It needs to start with an uppercase S with it. All right. So in C++, it was lowercase. Here, when you declare it, it needs to be uppercase with it. Note the name, public stag, void, main, string, argument, uppercase, S with the same. All right. So notice here it is. So by convention, the name should always begin with an uppercase uh, character with the same. Uh, primitive variable actually contains a value uh, being assigned with this is 25. So it's what's called objects are not stored in variable. However, the objects are referenced by a variable with this thing. We'll talk a little more about what this means as the time come with this thing. So all you're doing is you're saying that here's Charleston is putting in string name. This is what's called a reference address to the thing. So when a variable reference an object, it contains the memory address of the location. So this variable city name right here, it has the address of Charleston. That's all it's doing. Okay. So look at your how this is being declared. Now remember now, if it's uh, equivalent to a uh, literal in a string, it needs to be in double quotes. So when you actually look at a string, you can declare a string. Look at the syntax, the name of the class, the object, equal new string 
this string is this string and this literal call hello is being assigned to value and later on if you look at the string demo.java that's on page um, string loader that job yeah, I'm trying to find that really quick here look at page 78 string demo that Java so they give you good morning Herman greeting and name with it and you can concatenate by using that plus sign greeting plus name what does this mean so the greeting and name holds the memory address of the string literal does that make sense so that's how you want to think about it like that <coughs> guess what you can use the string size with the dot syntax of the length that's this will return you the length of it now recall in a length we start counting with what number versus a position if it's length I ask you to start counting with number one if it's a position you start counting with number zero remember that right so the statement runs the length method on the object that you point to as the value in this thing so that value that you had a few minutes ago is what? Hello? So if I had to guess this length right here, it would be output as what? One, two, three, four, five. That's the length for that. So when you look at this length right here, it's going to pull back the hello, the method length, and this thing at the same time with this thing. Anyway. So when you look at um, the next one, Here's another string method. Uh, string class contains many methods that helps the uh, man manipulations of string. String objects are immutable, meaning that they cannot be changed. You can't change a string uh, with as well. Let me check the time on this thing. I gotta stop.